is it so inconsistent? Construction is hard. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Construction is Hard podcast. Uh, my name is Brian Witt. To my left here is Gary Fox, aka Foxy. So from here today, we'll be talking about... <laughs> I'll try to slide something in each time. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, so for those of you that have been tuning into our series so far, we are coming to the close of season one. In fact, this will be our last episode of season one for the Construction is Hard podcast. We will be coming out with a season two. The pilot made the grade. Uh, we got the green light to continue doing this ridiculousness. But as we close out season one, a quick review for those of you who have or have not been following us along this journey, we've been talking about workforce management. And in season one, we started the whole process off by going through what is workforce management in the way of where do, how do we define the gap? How do we identify the edges of it and then fill in the space in between? We talked about what comprises it. How are we going about it today? We're in spreadsheet hell. Uh, we've talked about how we are trying to put practices together with PPT, people process technology. Uh, we've broken down each category of workforce management, each category or trust that build the workforce management bridge. So from the forecast to the roster schedule, communications, information, productivity, we've put these together to hopefully show how they're symbiotic and how this workforce management practice is rather large, but also the glue that holds a lot of stuff together. Recently, we've discussed just that piece of discipline and having processes and having your processes live in a tool fit to the task and how you can maintain that accountability or that team approach and have sustainable training or education letting your team be aware of what and why it's important and how we approach it and how we consistently and sustainably execute workforce management across every job, every time. So how are we going to bring this whole thing and how are we going to land this plane? And there's a, uh, a funny topic that is always out there. It's on everybody's mind, whether you're evaluating a workforce management software, whether you're thinking about it, whether you've never heard about it, or whether you've had one for years and now you're contemplating what to do next. And it all comes down to this idea of value. What is the value? What is the dollars? What is the quote ROI, which we're going to pick on today? What, why would I do something like this when it comes to money? Right. And it's what it all boils <laughs> down to, you know, we're in construction. It's about the dollars and what we want to talk about today. The intent that we really want to convey today is how to approach value with a workforce management platform or better yet the workforce management practice it is about the practice it's not about the buttons it's not about the tool it is about how i can achieve a sustainable and effective workforce management practice across all my jobs across all my people but it takes a platform it takes a tool fit to the task to truly achieve that to truly bring those people together have those disciplined sustainable processes and to have repeatable success thus the earnings or the return on investment, so to speak. So we're talking about this idea of value. We're talking about ROI. It's again, where it's not about if you're thinking about the tool, what, what, why is this tool? Why is this button going to save me X amount of time? Yada, yada. We're going to get right out ahead of this. You're wrong. You're thinking about it the wrong way. And we're going to go in through today. We're going to talk about, I've got a little analogy that I think helps visualize once you've seen the inside of the honeycomb, once you've seen the door that the workforce management platform should open, your practice, the new level that you can achieve, we're going to talk a little bit of analogies. We're going to go into the classic ROI approach. We're not trying to avoid it. We're going to go into it, but we're going to go into it in order to show you just how ridiculous and how massive it is if you really want to uncover every single ROI factor, so to speak. So we'll go through the traditional ROI approach. How do we break down ROI by hard factor ROIs, soft factor ROIs? What do those things mean? Breaking down ROI by audience, but better yet, how should we really be thinking about the value of a workforce management platform across our organization? What it represents when it comes to taking our organization from the wasteland to the land of plenty. Um, <laughs> what did I, anything I missed before we kick off and, and I get to start talking about ice? No, I think that the in, one, one thing I'll elaborate on that a little bit, I guess, is is that the industry's changing, and 
uh, and you're going to talk about that with the ice analogy. Uh, but either get on board and stay current with the what your competitors are doing, or you will become obsolete and you're all it over time. It, the industry is changing, and and you have to keep up with this technology. The co- and the contractors that are adopting these workforce per- practices, uh, management ideas are succeeding. They now, are. This is proven. This is not something that the, we're just talking about. And they're not. Work. Su- this, they're, this is proven. They're not just succeeding. They're kicking the shit out of their competitors. Yeah, I think it's fair to say. It, it, I mean, they are. Yeah. Gary and I have seen it now. Over the last five to ten years, the groups that have picked this up now, they've been there. They've proven you can do it. This is not yep. impossible. It does take There's time. There's plenty of case studies out there now. Yep. They and, are best the class. And the, what they're doing is now spreading. Their peer groups are all buying into it now. Their holding companies are mandating it as a practice because you cannot ignore the value that this brings. Now, we're going to talk today about when we first started talking about these groups back when workforce management software was still not a thing. It, we had to describe what is this term workforce management and then why would I need a tool now it's a more accepted it's been identified it's getting established now has it been fully accepted no that's why you and i are doing this podcast there's going to come a day when people look back and they go yeah these idiots like of course but for now there are still large pockets of the industry that don't value or don't and it's not their fault actually it's they just haven't had the ability or the opportunity yet to really identify and get to see what we're talking about and that's why you and i are here we're just trying to share how valuable this really is and so today we're talking about that value uh, and we want to help talk about if you're in one of those situations where you got to provide an ROI analysis or a business case, like, yeah, we'll try to help you, but we hope to convey it to where it becomes apparent how ridiculous it is, how that'll be a 50, 60, 100 page analysis because it touches so many areas of your business that you weren't aware of today. So actually, before I get into talk about ICE, hey, when you guys first were evaluating a workforce management tool, honestly, how did it go? How did you get it? get it done at your company interestingly enough i started the the processes five years before we actually had a workforce management tool so i think that's a pretty unique situation where uh, we recognize that the path we were going down and how uh, projects were failing in the last 20 percent of every job we were bleeding out on a lot of projects and really tried to figure out what was really the true cause of that. And we kind of landed on the idea of getting more people involved, make it more of a team effort, involving the project manager more in labor management. Um, and so we, we started building this. I, at the time, I called it SEAL Team 6. There were six members of each construction team and put them together to basically uh, see the job uh, from cradle to grave. But I just mean the, the ROI aspect. Right. So, but that's my point. When the, when the platforms came along, it was an absolute no-brainer for us because we ha- already had the processes in place and we had evolved into something that a lot of contractors hadn't done so yet. So you're, you're going to talk about this, this ICE analogy right and and we were pretty much there we were already transforming over into the next wave of how projects are are uh, managed and so for us the it wasn't so much about the the money the return on investment it was about process improvement enhancing our processes because we knew or at least i thought let's put it that way and the, the way i always assess anything when it come to the operations was will this save me uh whatever the cost is on an annual basis so let's say it's twenty five thousand dollars will will this cost will this save me one quarter of one journeyman annually Mm -hmm. and if the answer to that is yes go it's a no-brainer it's we're already break even i mean it was very obvious to us that yes this is gonna you know i got a 400 man shop right one guy I mean, my bet is we'd probably be able to keep one journeyman off our, our payroll as a result of the, the efficiencies of this bring. So uh, it was really never a contentious thing within our company. We knew. We instinctively knew. And I think that's important. You know, try to con- convince a CFO that I instinctively know that we're going to be okay. 
And that's well, I'm, I'm a dummy electrician, right? I don't have, I'm not an accountant. <laughs> I'm, I'm just some guy trying to run the operations, right? I, and, 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 you know, we had a, a strong enough, good enough team where, where I got away with that. Um, one of the things I asked, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, is, well, tell me how much it costs right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> and we're going to get it. We're getting a little ahead of the No, no, this is but, a good, this is, you, you Gary's group, already knew where they were going. And so when they saw the destination or they saw the path, the platform that could give them the path to get to where they wanted to go, it's a no brainer. But just there, if your group isn't in that state, if you're one of the many, many groups that we've spoken with who I, I can tell there's something here, but how do I get the excuse or the clout or the value to take it to leadership? How do I get the CFO to buy in? Maybe I can't just say, hey, John, sign it, move on. That's what we're gonna help with today. All right, we're talking about ice. I love, I love this. Okay, so there's a quote by uh, our Buckminster Fuller, I believe, something like that, and and, it, and it's I'm going to butcher it, but it talks something along the lines of um, if you want to change the way people do something or the way the way people think, don't don't try teach them to do it a new way. Give them a tool that will change the way they think about it. Give them a tool that will change the way they approach the problem. And that's a lot of what we're what we're doing with these workforce management platforms, right? And it's about, as I said earlier, we are trying to open the door or pave a path or build a bridge that previously was was it was an impasse. We couldn't get past these obstacles because our tools held us back. And and this is an opportunity to open the door and get to a better place. So ice. Why are we talking about ice? Okay, so for the uh, stupid history lesson, but I, I I think you'll enjoy this. Back in the day, ice manufacturing was actually, for all of, I mean, all of humanity actually have had different versions of trying to transport and preserve ice. Uh, even far back into like, you know, more ancient times in China, yada, yada, there were these ice houses or ice apparatuses or different ways to cut ice or transfer it from natural frozen lakes and such to where people were inhabiting. Well, so over millennia, right, we are just trying to get better and better at how we cut and move ice so now fast forward to north america to the u.s and you know in the 1800s and stuff we are still going up to these huge freshwater lakes uh, up in the northeast and such and we're just trying to cut these ice blocks and these people are making a lot of money this is an entire industry around ice but as everyone starts to compete and try to do better they're all thinking about how do i how do i cut a bigger ice block how do I move the ice block faster? How do we insulate the cars on the train to help transport the block faster before it melts? How do we get a holding bin to transport the ice and then hold it there longer until the consumer can finally get to it? And so this whole industry is around, hey, how do I uh, build a better mousetrap, right? How do I improve on what we're doing today? And then this guy walks along, uh, Dr. John Gorey, and in around the 1800s, 1850s, he patents the very first concept of an ice maker or a condenser of sorts. And at the time, he has this invention, and basically now it breaks the whole model. It threatens to change the entire manufacturing of ice industry on its head because now I don't need any of that. Now I can have the ice where I want it, when I want it. Well, he starts this off, and actually it goes, it's bad. Uh, it's it's too expensive. Why would I do that? It's easier for me to just pay to have the ice delivered to the you know the back of my house, or it's easier for us to just continue to cut and move it. You know these machines are too intricate and they're too expensive for me to buy. Yada yada. And this guy, the only reason they, they in certain histories or articles that you read, the only reason it didn't come faster was this guy ended up dying early in his mid fifties. So he wasn't there to actually continue to drive it forward. But sure enough, people from the ice industry now pick up this idea and go, Hey, wait a minute, this this changes the way we go about this. This is fundamentally a new way of approaching it and it takes away a lot of the inhibitors like insulation and larger blocks cutting, et cetera. And they pick it up and immediately it's a hit. And now, you know, the whole industry just overnight is changed. And the reason we talk about this, right, is there's this problem that we'd been approaching the same way forever. And everyone's trying to do better. We're all always trying to do better. No one's trying to be a, a slouch. But the way that we were trying to do better, we were looking at it with the same tools, 
with the same tech. We're still looking at it the way we had hundreds of years before. Well, cut a bigger block, it's gonna melt so much, insulate it better, it'll last longer, and everyone's trying to go through. These guys are cutting blocks of ice that are huge, massive. Insert a new tool or a new technology and all of a sudden the whole thing changes. And I'm not gonna say, you know, oh, hey, like we've got the, uh, we've got the better ice block, so to speak, but this workforce management software in our construction industry, in workforce management, these platforms really are doing something similar, right? Instead of trying to cut bigger blocks, make bigger spreadsheets, instead of trying to insulate the, uh, insulate the, the railroad cars better, instead of trying to have a better macro or have a, a better labor meeting, right? Have a better look ahead, have a better magnet board. Instead of trying to continue to build off these naturally limiting practices, we have an opportunity to really bring in a platform that again, opens whole new doors, but the exact same question is coming up as it did back then. Wait, this ice condenser, this new thing on the market, it's, it's expensive and we don't pay for that right now. I just have ice delivered to the back of my house, right? And there is this, this investment that it would have taken to start having that and we're seeing the exact same thing today and that's why we're here talking about value today is w Gary just hit on it. W we wanna talk about ROI but Excel, oh, Excel's free. And we all know it's not actually free, but really think about it. What does it cost to manage your entire workforce across all of your projects each year without a platform? We could talk for a half hour on that. Start listing everything that we pay for right now that we have accepted as part of labor management and don't even question the cost of it anymore. An example would be the first PC that came into the office with Lotus 1, 2, 3, right? And All Gary sudden, got to see these things. And I did get to see <laughs> these things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, all of a sudden there's a spreadsheet. What does this do? What does math for you? Well, there's a step in the right direction. A lot of contractors, they wouldn't make the investment in that. And now you look back at it, that's pretty ridiculous not to, mm -hmm. right? And 100%. now they do. And they don't even realize that this is all part of the cost of the labor management processes now, right? So it's not just so much that you're going to spend an additional amount of money. There's an offset there. Now, to what degree? That's the that's the trick, mm -hmm. right? We're not saying okay. pay a million dollars. No. And, and it's, it's not a blank check. But I will argue, I know where all these platforms are priced today. And guess what? They are very cheap still because we're in the early stages. When this stuff gets figured out, by the way, everybody, this stuff's going to get more expensive. Mark my words, because yeah, everyone's like going to wreck it. Mm -hmm. um, I am of the camp that believes because of the increases in efficiencies, the way your business changes, that this is actually a money saver. Oh, yeah. I truly believe that. Um, money I have maker. a tough time proving it. I agree. It's a money. Ma I, yeah, I would argue it's a money maker. Maybe a better way of putting it. It's, it's, um, we, it opens doors for us to achieve levels of profit or efficiency or, or do more with less than right. we could have possibly without it. Right. Um, so, so let's, okay, we're diving into ROI here, right? We're getting into our first section. If we're going to talk about this, you know, this idea of ROI and a return on investment, the first thing that I think we're pointing out is I dare you to try to truly uncover what it actually costs you today. So everyone's going, oh, say I'm going to spend, let's make it easy. Say I'm going to spend $10,000 on a workforce management tool, right? Well, if you're going to do a return on investment, let's do the actual comparison. Return on what investment? So is it going to be, are you comparing it to the 10K or are you comparing it to the blank dollars that you actually spend today? And if you think about that, let's really break that down. How many of your people in operations are wasting their time trying to simply remember your workforce management categories, right? Go by that. How much time are we really spending trying to labor plan or forecast from executives down to PMs, from the look aheads and the field guys? Let's talk, you know, we'll talk more about billable hours, yada, yada. How much time are we spending as an organization trying to align everybody on where they're going next? How are we, how much are we spending on trying to bring everybody together and plan the transition? What are we missing an opportunity cost, right? There's opportunities going by us and we don't even realize it. And we're missing those as well. Profits, pure profits. We are not getting off jobs as fast as we should have to get onto the next one in an appropriate manner. We are burning out on jobs. We call it margin fade or bleeding out or profit fade because we don't have the ability to do these things on every job because the tools didn't support the task. We're cutting big blocks of ice still. And it turns out like with a little bit of investment, we, we walk away from all that. Um, 
ROI, you can really start to actually break it down. And by the way, we've got ROI and then we have COI. ROI is your return on investment. COI is your cost of ignorance. So if you're going to just ignore, say, no, it's fine. We're doing it today. There's a cost to that. And we're going to hit on that today too. To continue doing business the way we have had to without these tools, there is now a cost associated to choosing that path. Because like we just mentioned, your competitors have this stuff and they are achieving better and better levels of efficiency. They're doing more jobs with less. They know where to take on the work. It is a dangerous game right now. There's so much work out there. We do not have a ton of great people available. So groups are being pressured to take on more work than may, they may want to. And it is a, that's a, that's a Russian roulette game. And well, you hit the wrong chamber, that's going to be a rough time. When, when I started um, estimating, we did it with columnar sheets and calculators with tapes on them. And, you know, uh, switched over to computerized estimating platforms. And at the time, it said, do we really need to make this investment? Think about that. So I'm glad we did. <laughs> my grandfather, my grandfather, God rest his soul, he was one cheap son of a bitch. This guy, and just, he pinched pennies into dimes. He had this old, old Buick car, and he bored a hole through the corner post and ran fishing line to the windshield wipers rather than pay to have them fixed. So that way he could yank on that fishing line and have a wood handle and so run That's the, a pretty high test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the best part. Think about it. He has <laughs> my mother and her sisters and brothers. He has all these kids. This is a manual transmission car, so if it's raining... How are you going to shift, steer, and run the windshield wipers? Problem solved. Kid sits behind me. You take the handle. You run the windshield wipers. Everybody had to work to get this car down the damn street. Why I say all this, even my grandfather in his infinite depression era, you know, frugalism, he still spent his whole career. He did a 45 to 50 year career as a drafter after WW2. And even then, when AutoCAD and digital drafting, he was just coming out of it. He was basically out of the industry. But I remember him saying when that came along, he goes, I'm glad I had the industry when I did because it's all going to change. And he's like, and people that don't do it, they're done. I remember us having that kind of, I mean, it's these things, right? This is one of those things. This is one of those things. The spreadsheets, the spreadsheet hell, the job boards, all the long ass labor meetings, all the different, well, this guy was supposed to be here. He wasn't there. Where was he supposed to be? Why did we run over on this job? Oh, I don't know. I'm telling you, the, 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 there's a magnifying glass getting put on top of all of it. And that's what this, we talk about value. So I'm rambling about my, my frugal grandfather, but this ROI approach, all right? There's two ways you can really kind of break it down. Okay, so you have ROI and you have hard factor ROIs. Hard ROI factors and you have soft ROI factors. Now, the difference between those two, different people have different uh, uh, opinions, etc. I had a friend, Jesse, who broke it down well, and he goes, you know, a hard ROI factor is something that I can, it's an event. It's a specific thing that I can see, and there's a before and an after. And it's something that is directly related to dollars. Okay, so it's a hard ROI factors are dollars driven, dollars related, and they are also usually a specific event or um, occurrence or action. An example would be, what is the before cost of dispatching or transferring an individual from job A to job B? This is, I love this one, because if you really think about it, taking Bill from job A to job B requires a phone call to Bill. Hopefully he picks up. So there's, I don't know, a few minutes. I love when, when people argue with me. I only spent 30 seconds on the phone. I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. Hey, did, did, the, uh, did the Chiefs win that last football game? Oh, I don't know. No one. Spare me. 30 seconds. Win? Of course yeah, they won. fan. But so I got to call Bill to get him from job A to job B. Then I got to call the people on job A and let them know Bill's leaving. Then I got to call the people on job B, let them know Bill's a, 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 a arriving, have tools and equipment and materials ready for him, yada, yada. But here's the best part. That's today. Today I call the field leader on A, the field member themselves that's transferring, and the receiving field team leader on B. No one ever tells the project management. No one ever alerts accounting to the new projections. And none of this other stuff ever happens today. And this is where we're talking about a new a door to a better area. So not only is the hard ROI factor the idea of like how much time do all those phone calls take? And imagine now automating all those phone calls or text messages or emails, having them consolidated, having the risk reduced or the security. Those are all soft, but the hard ROI number is before it took me 20 minutes basically to align everybody and transfer the individual. After a tool, it should take us about one minute. So what is that ROI when you consider minutes to dollars per billable worker? Not, not only that, but 
what we don't recognize is by not notifying the project manager, that project manager is in his office and he discovers this at some point in time on his own. Mm-hmm. How much time is wasted there now? Now he's got to adjust. He's he's He got caught by surprise, right? That derails him. And now we're reacting. Uh, yes. Now, yeah, right, we're playing baseball. If you've seen previous episodes, we can do a comparison of baseball and football. But, you know, we are reactive at that point. Then that's never good. <laughs> and these these hard ROI factors, event by event, if you consider how many of them all fall under forecasting, scheduling, rostering, maintaining that roster, maintaining and managing certs, trainings, experiences, all that kind of stuff, information, communications, these dispatches, there are hundreds of them. There are hundreds of them. And, and you don't think over the course of a year they come out to be, I don't care if, if you're a 100-person contractor or you're a 10,000 person contractor, which we have come across all groups in between there and below. You really want to add all those up? You're going to get your hard ROI factor. You're going to get your return on investment. Well, when when we put this together, we started to look, try to list we start, those yeah. and we quit. Yeah. So we, that's enough. We can't do this. We go, boy, so Gary and I are going, you know what? I've had enough of this shit. We're going to sit here and talk about all of them. It doesn't matter if it takes four hours. Sorry, guys. Like, we're going to sit here and talk about them. And we started going and we go, this is. You all are going to go to sleep. This Sinless. is so dumb. And it, and here's the best part. If we did put them all out there, someone would still find an excuse and a way to say, oh, no, that's – I've been well, through yeah. it. I've talked to a th- over a 1,000 contractors about this now, and I'm telling you, hey, let's say you spend one minute on the phone. No, 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 that, that's not me. I spend 30 seconds. There's always a cop out. And yeah. that's why if you're even going through – this hard ROI factor approach, like props to you, and I apologize. I apologize if you have to, because it means that you missed the mark. Your organization missed the mark at the very beginning about what is the value and the fact you're, you're cutting big blocks of ice. You keep cutting that ice, and I, I wish you the best. We really do. But hard ROI factors, there are the event ones, and then there's also the holistic approach. And this might be a way that I genuinely do. I like this approach. If you have to, if you're up against that wall, you're fighting a CFO or whoever, and you're trying to put together a, a buy dollar analysis, check this one out. We have the FTE analysis, which Gary hit on here a second ago, and I'm ask, gonna ask him to go back into it. We also have the annual labor budget approach. Okay, so let's do the FTE analysis, or in other words, like, hey, you got one FTE, right? And they kind of right. cost you this much. I mean, for the most part, what these platforms cost is probably um, 1% of one journeyman electrician annually. Right, so if, if I can save one person off my workforce. One person or ten percent, right? Well, Somewhere yeah, in there. Yeah. yeah, one person. That's all I need. And I need about oh, maybe a quarter of that one person even. It's that low. It's mm-hmm. that cheap. One tenth of one journeyman <laughs> over the course right. of a year. Um it becomes it is not even worth worth for me it wasn't even worth wasting my time. Once I saw the cost of it and compared it to the cost of an FTE it was an absolute no-brainer. I knew that this was going to improve our operations to the point that this is going to make us money. This is not something that is going to cost. And then understanding, too, that, that we are spending money currently on workforce management, and that's just a, 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 a side benefit. It may even be cheaper <laughs> than the way you are doing it. it is, I, I guarantee and, you know, it's cheaper than, than what you're doing today, if you yeah. really consider what goes on today. But also, uh, now, the cost of the tool itself, here's another piece, though, that, that we're going to kind of, I think, uncover here is, yeah, there's the cost of the tool itself, but as Gary mentioned, there's also the, where this is going to change the way we do this, there's going to be a cost in the change, right? Consider that and be ready for it. You gotta, you're going to pay, and you should be, by the way, you should be paying companies to truly lead you through this workforce management evolution. Right? It costs money for someone to come in with your business, help uncover all these areas, tie them all together, document them, and then usher you or lead you. They should lead you towards, here's the kicker, your workforce management vision, not how the tool works. Why are you purchasing this for your workforce management operations? What are the goals that you have? We want to forecast better. We want to consolidate our people and processes. We want to standardize. Those are all legitimate and awesome workforce management end states. Why are you buying this tool? Why are you listening to this podcast? Why would you want to change or evolve this area of your business? Make sure that they're taking you and they're aligning on that vision and they're going to lead you to that vision. But that's, that's a cost too. And, it's, and I'm telling you now, that part's worth it too. Because without it, 
you'll invest in these tools. It's a silver bullet approach. You buy the tool and you think you're done. Hey, uh, Bill is a, uh, a senior project manager and he likes computers. So Bill, you're going to do this. Nope. The organization is going to invest and give time and effort to create this change. But if the change has direction, you're on the right path. And the organization has to embrace it. Yes. We talked about culture with Toby in the past. So kind of a throwback for those of you that, uh, that have seen those episodes, but yeah, the culture has got to be there. The processes have to be identified, but then you're going to invest in that change. So we're talking ROI, we're talking hard factor ROIs, talking dollars. We went across the whole, the uh, buy event approach. Here's the holistic approach, the FTE analysis, which Gary covered, and then we have the annual labor budget. Now, this one is a, I think this one nails it right between the eyes, but a workforce management platform, forecasting, scheduling, communications, rostering, you, you know, what we're talking about is increasing our efficiency, our effectiveness, our accuracy, our alignment around all of our people across all of our projects. And we primarily work with self perform MEP contractors, that's 40 plus percent of our business, right? This is the meat and potatoes. This is why we exist, right? So if we look at our annual labor budget, or in other words, here's an example, you have 100 annual average active field team size. So I'm talking to contractor A and they say, yep, on average, over the course of the year, we got 100 people in the field. Great. Okay, take those 100 people, let's assume that they cost the company hundred thousand dollars a year annually maybe they're paid that maybe they just cost us that they're probably paid a lot more good but, number to use yeah good number to use so 100k per fte you take 100k by your you know 100 person field force the total annual labor budget for this organization is 10 million dollars 100 by 100 thousand so that 10 million dollars is the amount of money that is going to come in and out of your organization now this is the tool these workforce management tools should tell you where, when, and how that $10 million should be utilized across all your projects and where you should make the money on that and where it's being fallen in the gaps, where people are floating, where you have too many, too few. That's all the things that this tool should achieve. So I love when groups talk about, oh, my accounting and ERP system tell me what's going to happen with my annual labor budget. Nope. They tell you after the fact what happened. They don't tell you what should happen. They don't tell you how you can best leverage it. They tell you, yep, here's how it ended up, but you don't know where it's well, going to go. But uh, to add on to that, okay, th that argument is, well, that's my earned value analysis. That's looking out in the future, right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing an analysis on the level of productivity, and so therefore I can do the math to tell me where my labor budget is going to end up at the end of the year. Eh, false. Yep. Because you're not comparing it to your labor plan, and your whip looks like an EKG. That is bouncing all over. You can't go by that. I mean, some contractors are better at it than others, but if you're not tying it back into reality of what's actually going on in the field, on the ground, it's a guess. And it's if you can guess. guess that well, God bless you. Mm -hmm. You know, That's, very few people can. Talk about ROI factors. You want to guess, you want to run your business that risky? Again, props to you, you got balls. Because I don't want to do that. I want to know. I want to reduce the risk. And I want to know where is it going and are we on track. Um, so this annual labor budget, I got a $10 million annual labor budget. Now, all my people across all my projects, that's what we're talking about. Hey, how effective do you think we are today in workforce management without a tool, right? This ROI approach. Are you 100% effective? Meaning does every person go across every project at the exact right times? Is the communication as dialed in as possible? Are we maximizing profits? Are our people getting being rostered and built up? Are we developing our people, not just off their experiences, but where we can leverage them better? Are we getting the information to all the team members, all this different stuff? Are we really perfect in this today? And just to help set some barriers, most groups come back to us and they go, we're probably about 50 to 60% effective on this today. If you think about how much time we spend trying to bring everybody together, how much time we spend trying to plan jobs, are we planning jobs with, you know, these labor planning curves and factors of like cold weather, overtime work. We've been working with this GC. We won't quite usually peak. Let's anticipate that. There are groups doing really great things today, but then at the same time, when it comes to the field and office communication, does it does it boil down? What is the overall effectiveness? It's probably 50 to 75%, and it's not a knock on anybody. This is hard. Construction is hard. That's, that's it, high. That's high. That's and high. so we ask, okay, of your $10 million annual labor budget, how effective are we today? But then let's think about it this way. Even if you are 90% effective, right? Let's say you are the cat's meow, good for you. 
you're 90% effective. Now to get one more percent of effectiveness, you're probably limited by your tools too. You probably don't have the tools to fit the task. And that's probably, you've got all the processes in place. You've got smart people, right? Yeah. You're doing great things. Now it becomes, do you really have tools that are fit to this task that they can take you from 90 to 91% effectiveness in workforce management? So as we wrap up this annual labor the, budget. The, uh, I point out that say you're 50%. You probably have a, a greater return on your investment because you have more headroom to improve. Yeah, right. It's it's the well-oiled machines already that have a little bit of a more of a struggle to justify the return on investment than the than the companies that are probably less efficient. Yep. So we've got a we got a hundred people in our field force. We've got an annual labor budget of ten million dollars. Guess what? If a workforce management platform can help you gain 1% of efficiency or effectiveness. 1%, that's $100,000. Yeah. There's way more than your ROI, by the way. Hey, guess what? If you can gain 0.1%, one-tenth of 1% of efficiency, accuracy, effectiveness, and workforce management on a $10 million annual labor budget, 100 people, boom, now you got 10K back. That's, I, I mean, these are a tenth of 1%. Uh, by the way, you gain way more. <laughs> it's not hard. It's a, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> it's, it's just an absolute no-brainer. Yep. And it doesn't fall through when you when, when groups don't get this, by the way, when they don't get that 1% maybe back. You know why? It's because the processes and the, and the training and the culture. It's because we took the silver bullet approach. We didn't intentionally invest and plan on the adoption piece. We didn't identify what right looks like with proper education and training and and that's where all of a sudden, like, yeah, we won't get that because guess what? Nobody touched it because we never explained why. We didn't have the vision that we were chasing, and we didn't agree as an organization to adopt, own, and progress. And the companies that really do well with this is when the COO is the one that really understands mm -hmm. what this is and and dives into the the whole thing and, and pulls the entire company together. It's it's the the people that adopt the platform and then shove it off to some administrative assistant or something to, to run yep. it. Um, they never really realized the full benefit of what this really is. Yep. Here's my, here's my superintendent, my scheduling admin, my senior PM. And like, they got it. They'll handle it. And another yeah. wrong answer. It, yeah. It's, and it's not us trying to be glib or, 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 you know, assholes here, quite frankly, it's just, it's, you look back, Gary and I, I have seen almost every group that has bought and, and churned a, or, or dropped a workforce management tool. And you can almost tell every time, Hey, number one, who's going to show up to the call to tell you why they don't think it's going well. If it's an IT director, which no offense, guys, love you guys. You guys are some of our best champions. You get it. But if it's the IT director, if it's a PM, if it's a superintendent, if it's not those operational leaders that should have formed and upheld and, and driven towards the operational vision we already know that was probably the reason let's be real yeah. there's not a true backing in the organization to create this our best friends most of the people that we talk to the most are our directors of operations vps of operations coos because that's who understands what this really yeah, they're does they're fully engaged they're fully engaged they transform the business all right hard roi factors that's our you know we got all these different events we've got the buy fte we have the annual labor budget soft ROI factors, okay? The soft ROI factors, if you're gonna go into those, there are again, unlimited numbers of these, but sometimes these are the most compelling ones, quite frankly. Soft ROI factors are traditionally described or conveyed as a, I can't necessarily put a number to it, but I know it's there, okay? So again, bucket all these into your workforce management categories. Forecasting, what is the, what is the uh, reduced risk of knowing or having the visibility of where you're going to be short or high on people, right? If you actually labor plan and you can feasibly actually labor plan every job, what is that worth having that visibility and that piece to go home and sleep at night? I mean, same thing with uh, communications. I got a great story just recently. Um, I had these friends of ours down to Kansas City and uh, communications, okay? They had a uh, drug test coming up uh, for one of their projects and a few of their people, and they used a workforce management platform to communicate that there would be a drug test and it was mandatory, yada, yada. Instead of, by the way, the maybe the easier, it's easier for me to just text them from my phone. I bet it is. Fast forward, though, these guys are down and they're telling us about how they had this drug test. They used a proper platform to communicate it, a consolidated platform to communicate this, which meant they had the security 
to go back and the history, the accountability to go back when a guy didn't show up for the drug test and now he's going, hey, no, no, don't suspend me from the job, yada, yada. They were able to go back and say, here's the history and the audit trail that this tool sent this communications out. It showed that it was opened and received and read. And they go, yep, sorry, man. Proof is in the pudding right there. Like yeah. it, we did what we were supposed to do. There's the, there's a security piece. That's how, what, what, what's the value put on that? I, hard to say, but these are all, there are infinite numbers of these and Gary and I, I mean, we could talk about them all day as well. I, I mean, really, there are so many. But our point is ROI in general, right? Like this value, it is hard to convey because it's there's so much. You, you know, you're talking about the drug test. It reminded me of something. And this doesn't get talked about near enough. The ability to archive the information. It's always there. With these with these spreadsheets, you're not going to be able to go back and look at what a job looked like or what your company looked like in your workforce management system three months ago. Everything's save, save, save. And you show me the guy that actually resurrects a spreadsheet from three months ago to see what was going on, right? Well, the platform does that for you. And it's as simple as setting a date. Now I can go, let's see, we had a job very similar to this. I can go back three months from now, three months in the past, and look and see exactly who was on the job, how we executed it, what stage of the project it was in, how it turned out. It's all right there. Now that starts affecting your estimating. That starts affecting jobs you're pursuing in a positive way. And I don't think we talk about that near enough. No. We talk about it in the present time a lot. But that tool, when you have the ability to turn back time and see and, and knowing the end result um, is, is invaluable. It's, and that's, like I said, these soft ROI factors, guess what? This is normally why people buy the tool. They normally end up purchasing these tools because these soft ROI factors, they're different for everybody. Everyone has their own unique needs or true compelling events. We were talking with a gentleman who he is getting ready to retire and he's going through succession planning. He's going, my son has to take over this company in the next year. I, I, it took me 40 years to figure out how we're doing labor management and labor operations. How is he ever supposed to figure this out? I want to retire. So sure enough, Mark goes, if I buy this tool, I'm going to standardize consolidate and, and give somebody a tool to be able to manage labor across jobs. It, yeah. And even though this kid isn't going to be the one doing it for his company, right? He has operational leaders, but the kid's got to know where the money's going. So sure enough, that's the only reason he bought the tool. He goes, yes, this is easily worth it. This is, but what's the value of him being able to retire, right? Like, but it's funny, you got to understand or identify truly in your organization with this idea of workforce management, A, can we just do it better? Is there just a way to gain more time back? Is there a way to gain some money back? Am I trying to forecast better because we want to know where the organization's going? I mean, it can touch just about anything. But in the end, if you really think about it, there's a way to break down and identify we need to, we need to get information in real time. We're tired of having the three-hour meeting every Friday where we react, come back together a week later, react again, and just Groundhog's Day again and again. What is the value of that to your company? Guess what? It's more than just the hours in that meeting. It is. There are people day in and day out that are dealing with that, and it loads the stress on them. There are so many other aspects out there. So if you have to go through an ROI analysis, I apologize, number one, that you have to do that. Uh, but number two, try breaking it down into hard ROI factors, soft ROI factors. Uh, if you want to go event by event, I more power to you. I hope that uh, best of luck. Uh, there are tons out there and it's not because you're going to get the answer you want. You'll make the numbers balance if you try hard enough, but also you're just going to waste a lot of time just going through a ton of different events. Try the holistic approach. Try the buy FTE. Try the annual labor budget. Those make it pretty clear pretty quick just how much value is out there what we're talking about. Or how much that guy, if you go by the time studies, how much it's costing for the person to do the time study and, and, and yeah yeah you now, now you're paying that guy to go across the business because again watch what yeah what is the true cost 
to your company to manage your workforce today without a platform. What is that true cost? That guy is gonna have to go talk to every department to truly get it because workforce management spans the business. This is integral to our business. Everyone has a piece of this pie and they're all losing time and effort trying to put in to maintain this. So with that being said, we got our hard factors, we got our soft ROI factors. The other piece really is your audience specific, okay? There is this, if you're in your organization and you're trying to determine, you know, how do I get this into certain people's hands, et cetera, a lot of it is too, just know who you're talking to and know that, that you can't just write one ROI analysis and then pass it around the company. Because operational leaders, so if you think audience specific ROIs or an audience specific value business case, really you gotta kind of break it down for a workforce management platform. You gotta break it down into an ops leaders what do they care about? You need to break one down for the project stakeholders. Then you got to break one down for the CFO. And you probably got to break another one down for the HR group because that's who gets left out a lot. Those are the people that almost benefit this. And, and imagine who they try to run around and hire when we plan ourselves into a labor shortage. Those people have an immense value being saved in something like this. So you got to also consider audience specific. And I would stress with those audience specific ones, again, if you want to break down the hard ROI factors, fine, but the soft ones might actually be enough to immediately convey this is this is something worth investing in. Um, again, I think our biggest intent in this is if you want to talk about ROI too or value, it's about the value. It is about opening doors or breaking free from what our tools are, are, are dragging us down or have a ball and chain where we're stuck today. Right, we are, we are stuck in this Groundhog's Day. We are stuck, everybody knows labor management is not the easy thing, it's not the fun thing, it is hard. There are ways out there and people have achieved it. People have achieved it, there are ways out there for us to do it better and we just wanna help uh, identify that and if ROI is one of the things blocking you from being able to get this into your organization, I hope that today helped identify some approaches but in the end, uh, even if you are looking at those ROI factors, I'm telling you now, you're cutting ice you're still cutting big still ice. Cut. And, and once you realize that there's a better way of doing this, there's an easier and a better way to have a team approach, a sustainable approach, a disciplined approach, an effective approach, better usage of our people, better project results, every time better visibility, consolidation, alignment of the organization around labor operations. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. What did yes, I miss? it is. Well, you know, it's what I always like to fall back on. It's controlled transparency and a high level of collaboration they've created within your company. And when those things start clicking, you've just created something very powerful for your, for yourself and for your company. Yeah, it's the real-time labor control center. Yep. Uh, it's, a single source of truth. We've got, it's, we've got, it's, we could throw this shit out yeah, all day. Yeah, yeah. we could. <laughs> it's, but it's all true. It's it not is. BS. No, it's, it's all true and it all intertwines and, and it's an opportunity that we haven't had before. Yep. And we're still in the early stages of this, but it's going to become commonplace and it's going to become expensive, like just yep. like you said. And, uh, but it will be the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. and, and people will go away. Yep. Contractors will disappear, the ones that don't keep up with this. That it's, we've, we've started to see it actually. I've got yeah. a few, yeah. I have a few groups that, that lost a labor manager here and there and they, they closed doors. Yep. Um, okay, this is a this is kind of a, this is our closeout here. Where this is the first season of the Construction Is Hard podcast. Uh, again, this season we really focused on workforce management. We will continue to do so because there's just so much to talk about. In season two, we're excited to bring in more people. You guys have heard Gary and I on our soapboxes, uh, you know, jumping up and down, kicking and screaming about this. You know, for the last 10, 12 plus episodes. Uh, in season two, I'm excited to say we're going to be bringing more people into the conversation. You and I will be uncovering some additional areas of opportunity or thought approaches to dif different areas of the business that workforce management can help with. But we're excited to have other people come join us and start telling more of their stories so you can hear other perspectives. Uh, Gary and I have our own perceptions and approaches, but there are other experiences out there that we're excited to bring to you. So again, thank you. If you have been watching this series, again, Gary and I really do. We appreciate this. Um, we can't believe we're doing this. Shit. It's time for a cigar, <laughs> don't you? I think it's about time for a cigar too. So we really do appreciate it though. And uh, please reach out to us. I'm serious. If you if these things are resonating with you, uh, reach out to Gary and or I and uh, go to our website, 
www.rivet.work, R-I-V-E-T.work. We're going to start bringing some sponsors together. It's going to get exciting. We're going to have a fun uh, a fun season too. But in the meantime, uh, I don't know when this will be released, but we're coming to the turn of the holiday season. We hope everybody has a great holiday season. And uh, again, I hope that everybody comes into 2024 uh, with a nice plan and we can help with those workforce management operations. So with that, we'll sign off here for this year. Construction is hard, but it doesn't have to be. Thank you, everybody. Yep. We are here to talk about workforce management. Why is it so inconsistent? Construction is hard. <laughs>